Hi guys, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, I've been really, really busy, but I'm gonna do a cracker for you now. Um, it's gonna be um, braised ox cheek, and I did have this last week and it was fantastic, so I thought it has to be done, I have to show you how to cook that one. Um, it's a delicious piece of meat, you can probably see that there. Um, it's got all this sort of marbling, so the flavor just becomes so, so intense in here. Um, I'm just gonna switch this on because I've got to get that nice and hot to brown that off. Uh, I've got some carrots here, I've got some celery, I've got about one onion and I've got a couple of cloves of garlic, uh, salt and pepper and some thyme um, and obviously beef stock and some uh, red wine. This is a Pinot Noir from Chile, uh, it's quite a good one and you don't need a huge amount of this and it's, uh, it's too good to put too much in as well of course so um, that's just limited there. So, um, first of all, I'm just going to salt and pepper this. Um, just a bit of salt on there. Um, this is my nice little gadget, my uh, weird pepper grinder. That cool, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, and then we obviously put this into here to brown off. Um, got some extra meat here. Um, so, I couldn't quite get enough ox cheek, but that's, uh, that's braising steak, I think something like that, or shin or something like that. Um, something very similar, so if the butcher runs out, you can use different cuts of meat and do exactly the same thing with it. So that's gonna have to brown. These are gonna have to brown, basically just caramelizing it to give it that sort of intensity of flavor on the outside, giving it that bit of crust, which will go into the food later. So the onions, so the garlic. Um, so as soon as I brown those, I'll come back to you and we'll, we'll start the video again, okay? Okay guys, so what I've done is I've sort of uh, caramelised all of the meat and the meat's in here, in that pot there. And in here I've got the vegetables which have been caramelised as well. Uh, I've just chucked the red wine in with that when it, while it was hot because that does two things. It deglazes the pan, so it gets all that lovely flavour that's on the bottom of the pan out into the sauce. Um, and it also burns off the alcohol so you don't have the alcohol left over. So what I'm going to try and do now is get this beef stock in here. I'm nearly there now, I'm nearly at the point where it's almost got to go in the oven so get all that in there. Just need a bit more water in there. Get that stock out. I'm hoping that we have enough space still in there for the vegetables. That's hot. If not, I might have to try it with this pan. It should be okay, but foiling this one might be tricky. I don't know that that one isn't so bad. So let's get these veggies in. Just get in there. There we go. And that, of course, will go in the dishwasher because life is far too short to be um, using the dishwasher. All my hands are clean, by the way. I always wash my hands before I'm doing any sort of cooking. So now what you have to do is get your time in there Goes the time. I hope you're thinking of some questions for my Q and A, guys. Um, and yeah, this isn't fresh time, and fresh time would be better. But you know, who gets fresh time from prices in the supermarket? Things, you know, come on, it's going on seconds, isn't it? So that goes in there, I'm nearly there. Point there. Oil goes on. Get the oil on nice and tight. Don't want that to be used in the other. So it's going in the oven at 150 degrees for about five to six hours. You'll get it right for your oven and your temperature. And what that will do is soften that to something pretty miraculous. Just make sure I've got space in the oven. I have, I'm trying not to spill anything. Oh dear, that's a bit of clean up time, so nobody wants a dirty oven. So I'm going to have to be careful when we get that out. No, don't want to dirty oven at all. Right, I'll clean the floor a little bit. So basically, that's going in there for five hours. Um, when it's finished, I'm not going to show any more video because it's just too much. I'll show a picture at the end of what it looked like last week. Um, when it's done, pour that liquid out into another saucepan, let it reduce to about half or it starts, just starts to thicken up nicely. Um, and then what you do is you can either use arrowroot or corn flour. 
basically put this into the required amount of water and that into the required amount of cold water, that's a thickening agent. What you then do is pour that into the sauce, bring the sauce to the boil, switch off, okay? If you use the arrowroot, it just gives it a lovely glazing colour so it doesn't decolorise it. Cornflour does lighten it up a little bit. Uh, another thing you could possibly do, uh, that I've been told by a, um, a superb teacher, um, is that if you add a um, small amount of butter, that can thicken it and, and leave it lovely and glossy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload, put the picture on at the end of this so you can see exactly how delicious it was. I um, hope that's been useful. If you like it, you want to see more of these videos, subscribe, share with your friends down below. That way. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.